Hi, I'm Tachi Levent Levy, founder of Blogic.me and WebRTC Courses. I'm here to break down real-time communications so you don't have to. Before we talk about WebRTC signaling, let's understand the difference between transport and signaling. When we talk about transport, what we get is a protocol that connects a client to a server from one side to another. It can be unidirectional, bidirectional, it can offer different types of capabilities. But the focus and the intent is generic. How do I connect from one device to another? When we talk about signaling, we add logic into that. We've got an application logic that needs to be solved. For example, how do I register to a system? How do I authenticate and authorize myself as a user? How do I dial out or talk to someone else? How do I send him messages? This is done through a signaling protocol. Transport usually deals from one point to the next, then signaling is usually end to end. It can go through different signaling, through different transport hops to get where we're looking at. Let's look here for example. If we talk about WebRTC and protocols, there are different transport protocols that we can use. UDP, TCP, and TLS are protocols that we cannot use directly in WebRTC, at least not in the browser, because web browsers don't give us access to these protocols directly. What we can use is HTTPS and the secure WebSocket. So the transports that we're going to use in WebRTC are going to be HTTPS and WebSockets. We can use UDP, TCP, and TLS if we're building our own application that is native without a browser. Now for the signaling part, I've selected these ones, SIP, XMPP, MQTT, Matrix, and proprietary protocols, whatever it is that you want. We're going to go and review these alongside another protocol called WIP. You can follow me on blogicme.com. See you there.